Hi and welcome back to Batty.com. Today we're going to show you how to rebuild a 97 through 04 Corvette HVAC controller. This is a CJ2 electronic model from a C5 Corvette. Common reasons to rebuild this would be the display is weak or out, a button is not working, or the button illumination is not working. Here we see the CJ2 electronic HVAC repair kit from Batty.com. That's B-A-T-E-E dot -E com. It includes a complete set of illumination bulbs, replacement switches, replacement electrolytic capacitors. It includes power resistors which regulate the display brightness and it includes a supply of solder. Okay, here we see the tools that I'm going to use to do this job. I have a pair of I have a pair of wire cutters. I have a 3 16 nut, nut driver. You can also just use a, a regular socket. You can also use a th regular 3 16 inch socket. I have a pair of needle nose pliers. I have an X-Acto knife. I have some solder braid. This solder braid is 1.5 millimeter in width. And I have a pair of tweezers. We're going to start by removing the four screws that hold the black plastic cover onto the back of this unit. They're located here, 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 and here. We'll set those aside. Then we'll gently lift the back cover off. And we'll see another circuit board inside here, again with four screws holding it in place. We'll remove those screws. Now that we've removed the screws, we'll press on the wiring harness connector, disconnect this connector, and then set the circuit board aside. Next we'll remove the two knobs marked driver and passenger. Okay. Behind the knobs we see some nuts holding these potentiometers in place. We'll remove those with needle nose pliers. Alright. And okay. Now that we've removed the nuts and washers, we'll gently press the two controls and lift the circuit board out the back side. We can see that we have a kind of a white button mat. Okay. You can see that we have a white uh, button cover mat. Here we see the display board. The display board has our blue display. It also has buttons for the various controls. There are ten of those. And it has some bulbs. The bulbs are the taller of the clear items on the on the board. There are 14 of those. And we'll replace all 14. There's also a row of LEDs. The LEDs are also clear, but they're shorter than the bulbs. And they're all in a straight line. They're located here, 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 and here. We're going to leave the LEDs alone when we replace the bulbs. To remove the bulb, I grasp the bulb on the back side of the board. I'll apply some heat to each of the two pins. Just kind of alternate and rock the bulb back and forth until it comes loose. And we'll set it aside. Now when I remove the, the bulb from that from those holes, we're left with a little bit of solder left. To get that out of the holes, I'll place solder braid over the hole. I'll apply heat. And the hole is clear. We'll repeat for the other hole. Okay, and both holes are clear. Next, we'll take the new bulb, poke the leads through the board,
push the bulb against the board completely and make sure it's it's vertical then we'll bend the lead slightly to hold that bulb in place while we solder it. We'll take some of the supplied solder we'll heat the connection feed the solder in just a very small amount of it is all that's needed we'll do the same thing for the next connection and the new bulb is soldered in place finally we'll take our wire cutters and we'll trim those leads nice and short so that there's no chance that they can touch each other and short the bulb out recording okay and this is the new bulb that I soldered in place we'll continue replacing bulbs until we replace them all next I'm going to show you how to replace a switch I'm going to apply a little bit of fresh solder to each side of the switch this adds a little bit of flux which helps that switch come out we'll use our exacto knife to help lever the switch away from the board okay we'll do the same thing on the other side again in the same way we'll clean up the board same way we cleaned up the, the holes for the bulbs, we'll clean up the holes for the switches. Same thing on the back side of the board. And the holes are cleaned. Next we'll take the new switch supplied with the kit. We'll press it into the holes on the board. We'll make sure that it's nice and flush on both sides. And We'll add just a little bit of solder to tack it in place. Okay, we'll flip it over. We'll solder the back side of this board. Okay. And here we see the newly replaced button. Uh, continue that for the next continue that for all ten buttons. If we look at the wiring harness board we'll see three electrolytic capacitors. We're going to go ahead and replace those. I, I don't see any signs of leakage here but we're going to go ahead and replace those while it's apart. In order to make sure we get polarity correct we're going to look for a white stripe on the capacitor that says negative and we're just going to mark a negative on the board. We're going to do the same thing for the other two. Okay. Next we'll flip the board over. To remove each capacitor, we're going to grab it from the back side of the board. We're going to apply some heat. We're going to apply heat to each of the terminals. Just kind of rock the capacitor away from the board. Okay, and it's been removed. Next we will use our solder braid to clear out the holes on the board. If it doesn't work the first time, just add a little bit of just add a little bit of fresh solder. Try it again. Both the holes have been cleared out. Recording. Okay. We'll take the new capacitor, poke it through the holes on the board making sure we line up the white stripe marked negative to the mark we made earlier we'll make sure that that capacitor is standing vertically and then we'll bend those leads slightly to help hold it in place while we solder the part next we'll apply heat and a small amount of solder to hold the new part in place when we solder it in place, we'll trim the leads nice and short. Next I'm going to show you how to change the eight resistors that control the display brightness. Those resistors are located in this row and this row. They're marked 241, which is a 240 ohm resistor. To remove them, we'll take our solder braid. We'll apply heat 
and remove as much of the solder as possible from both sides of the part. We'll take our X-Acto knife, lever it under the part, apply some heat to one end, gently lift the part away from the board, then we'll switch sides. Heat the other side, and the part comes loose. Ish. There we go. And we've got the old part off. I'll take my solder braid, and I'll clean up that pad. I'll do the other pad as well. Recording. Okay, here's the process that I use to install the new part. The first thing we'll do is we'll apply, we'll apply a little bit of solder to one pad. We'll pick up the part with our tweezers. We'll solder that in place. Next, Next, we'll apply a small amount of pressure to make sure the part sits flush against the board. Finally, we'll solder the other side. We'll repeat that process for the next seven resistors. Okay, since not everyone does surface mount soldering every day. We're going to check our work here. Um, we're going to use an ohm meter and we're going to measure across one of those resistors. These resistors should all be in parallel since we have eight of the 240 resistors in parallel what we see is 30.17 ohms. So we did solder all of these correctly. If you see a significantly higher number than that one or more resistors is not soldered properly. In that case, I would go back and check your work on each and every one of those solder joints. That completes our work to the top wiring harness board. Next, we'll reassemble. Okay, to reassemble, we will use some compressed air, clean out the chassis. Next, we'll install the button pad and it's going to go in this orientation. We'll make sure it goes over a post here and over a post here and around the corners everywhere else. Next I'm going to use a paper towel and some Windex clean this display before we reassemble it. Then we'll take the display board We'll line up the control knobs on each side and we'll gently set that board in place. Uh, to make sure we have these uh, control knobs oriented properly, we'll make sure this is the top. We'll make sure the pins on each of the control knobs faces down. If you've got them in that orientation, they're the way they should be. Next, we'll apply washers. This one happens to be missing a washer. And we'll install the nut. This one's missing a washer on this side, but that's okay. And I'll use my needle nose to tighten those up. We'll install the knobs this way. We'll make sure the flats of those controls are facing up. Then we'll press that knob in place. Make sure that it functions properly. It does. Then 
We'll do the same thing here. That one's a freely rotating knob, and it works properly as well. Next, we will reattach the wiring harness board. We'll install the back cover. We'll make sure that wire doesn't get pinched. And most importantly, we'll make sure those pins poke through the back side of the plastic case. Alright, is this recording now? Thank you. Next, we'll install the four screws that hold the wiring harness board to the black plastic case. And finally, we'll replace the back plastic cover. Finally, we'll replace the back plastic cover and install those four screws that hold it in place. There we go, and that completes the repairs to the controller unit. Next we'll test it out. Here we have a custom wiring harness that we use to test HVAC controllers here in the shop. I'm going to plug that in. We're looking for correct display. It's nice and bright. We're looking for functionality of each and every button. We have that. The controls work. Looks like we're done for now. Down in the description of this video I will link to the parts and the tools that we used. Thank you so very much for your support, and thank you for watching.